Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, here we are in the cage talking to Engram. We've got uh, John Costello and Martin Bowes. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about the album Des Das Kapital, which is due to be released uh, October, is it? Yeah. Late October. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, so just uh, just tell us a little bit about yourselves individually, because you both you both come from musical backgrounds of different calibres. Um, so obviously, you, Martin, you do attrition. Oh yeah, uh, since uh, since the day John Lennon was shot, actually, <laughs> um, December the eighth, nineteen eighty, was our first gig. I guess we had rehearsals, so it was a bit before then. But um, so I've done it. I've just with the various lineups, but always me, and I've just done. Kind of dark electronic music. Hmm. I don't intend it to be dark. It just is. I can't. I've tried to do a few things and it doesn't work. Um, I've just done that. I can't remember, it's like all my life, really. It seems like. And um, I've just come back from Transylvania, so it's a fair gig there. Um, so I've done that, and very little else actually in <laughs> terms of uh, bands. You know, I've just I didn't. Play in other bands because I couldn't play anything. Yeah. Why like electronics were good to me. Yeah. And um, so I've always had that background since like the early eighties, um, and doing lots of albums and touring. Um, and in ninety six, af just after the first US tour, actually, I um, I'd, I was started teaching music technology at the college here in Coventry, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I met John. Um, and you, what were you, what were you teaching? Uh, B Tech and A Level Media. Media. It's not a proper subject. And but the main thing was you were also doing the radio show. And, well, we were talking about the same sort of bands, weren't yeah, we? Yeah. Uh, obviously, when we were chatting, but, and uh, a bit about your radio show. Yeah. So um, the college had a restricted service radio license and. Uh, so I did the Monday night graveyard shift for the month that the that they were broadcasting. Um, so it was that kind of John Peel 10 till 12 slot um, where I did an electronic music show called Robotnik and then obviously perfect opportunity to get Martin in. Um, so we talked about attrition, we talked about our shared love of electronic music and he chose some stuff on the playlist. And, um, I've still got that on cassette somewhere. I know, it's so got to be out there. We'll yeah, have to digitise it for uh, posterity's sake. Um, so we got to talking more about maybe doing a collaboration because I'd done um, solo in individual electronic um, cassettes uh, in the 80s and um, we then managed all of a day and a half I think in the cage as it was then in its first incarnation yeah. um, where we recorded and kind of mixed What Am I? Uh, which was centred around a bunch of Videodrome samples that I got off cassette, I think. And we wanted to do something with it, but we didn't quite know what. First of all, we wanted to finish it, but Martin had met this guy on, on his US tour um, in North Carolina called Brian Mitchell, who was setting up a label called Silver, and he wanted to do a compilation album as his first release. So he, uh, Martin suggested um, this track to him and he loved it so much that he didn't even want us to finish it. He just wanted to release it as we had it at that stage. So that became part of um, Silver Records' first ever compilation album, which was called Alleviation, mm. which we released at the back end of 96. In the time when CD compilations would sell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And then life got in the way and I came out of a kind of very long major relationship and hit a, an extraordinarily good midlife crisis and Martin went the other way and had children. It was not just that, it was because I had to teach at the college. Yeah. I never really wanted to do <clears throat> a proper job, but um, it wasn't a bad one really. But yeah, there was that. And also it was got, I was very busy with attrition actually. Yeah. We were touring in America true. and Europe every year late 90s um, and I did a quite a, a lot of albums so it was just a lot to do and so I didn't have time and mm. we just uh, we'd occasionally see each other wouldn't we but yeah go to I remember we went to see Sparks yes in about 96 yeah I think so um, yeah it was yeah, great, it was yeah, great. Yeah. yeah excellent um, 
So we would, but it sort of drifted off a bit. And mm. it was only when in like the music courses were finishing, the I think most creative courses were just finishing at the college. Yeah, the whole program well, combusted. The whole system was yeah, just falling was apart. So I, I left and then um I left in two thousand and eleven and then you were I think like, I was on a little bit longer. Two years after. Yeah. yeah. It was Aston Eve actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. But, uh, well I, it was great because I'm I was gonna leave at one point before that and they you know, it's like the mafia just when I thought I was out and they dragged me back in. Yeah. But um so I would have left and gone gone away with nothing and uh, just to get out of there. But of course Unfortunately, when you're teaching two year A level courses, that means that you have to dump on one year of students that you've taken through who mm. expect you to finish with them. So they appeal to my better nature, and then I discovered that I had one. So uh, <laughs> so I stayed on for another year, and at which point I was made redundant. So bingo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was that, that, well then. Yeah, yeah, it worked out very well. <laughs> I don't know how it happened again, even, but we just were chatting and. Uh, so that I know you were saying about oh let's do some sort of DJ night at one point, weren't you? Yeah. Like, oh come on, we're getting old. Put a club let's night do it in before in we die. You know? Yeah, and then neither of us could be asked. No. no. So but, you, uh, you rekindled back at the uh, the reproduction gig. Is that is that right? Oh, no, that, no, yeah, that's right. Well, Trish yeah. played that, so yeah. we'd already yeah. bit before, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Because uh, it was probably two thousand and twelve. Mm. Um, yeah. So I think I, the idea was that I wanted to put on a an electronic music show that showcased not just one brand of electronica but kind of across a whole spectrum. It's a good so, line of that. Yeah, so um, we had an instrumental synthesis called Chris Gilbert from London um, doing his Mild Peril stuff, which was great. It was all Ableton stuff and he did it really, really well. And then uh, myself and then um, Cult With No Name, Eric's, my friend Eric Stein's band, and then uh, Naked Lunch, who I'd seen reformed play a gig the year before um, and they were beset by awful problems um, but then they pulled out a storming set mm. and reproduction 13 and then attrition headlined um, and then after that we kind of realized that there was an unfinished business out there and Martin said hey we've got an album to finish <laughs> <laughs> and so we went we went back at it and uh, five years down the line here we are we've we've finished it yeah. incredibly well, found it out. yeah yeah. yeah. Well, did we did. You, so when you first started back in '96, did you have the idea of doing a full album? And did you have an idea? Of... I don't think we were just test, just testing the water, really. Mm -hmm. Just you know, um, I'd not like worked. I'd not worked with anyone else um, after my first band. Basically, didn't work because I was a control freak, and so that's why I did all the in the '80s instrumental stuff myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and released the two cassettes in the 80s, um, which when you take that around full circle, no, nobody gave us shit about at the time, but uh, not in this country anyway, you know, people in Barcelona and in Germany and, you know, other places kind of liked it. Um, and it was distributed in an edition, the first one was an edition of 50 and the second one was an edition of 100. Um, but then... There was no kind of real progression for something like that, and I just didn't do it anymore. So when me and Martin got together, I don't think he'd worked with anyone compositionally for a long time, and I certainly hadn't. So we didn't really know whether it was going to work or not, and that's mm. why we just tested the water. Mm. But it, it seemed to work then, and of course the results were actually released on a Silver Records compilation album. Yeah. So it was just that for various complicated reasons we didn't actually manage to get back at it again for another 17 years mm. <laughs> and then you thought let's just make an album yeah you, you didn't think let's make a couple of songs no you it just seemed, well, it seemed silly to just go let's have a go at another song yeah you know, so let's do it yeah yeah. Sure. yeah i think the first idea was to do an ep and then we just kept kept on mm. building the basis of several tracks and once we had 10 tracks we realized hey there's an album's worth so we might just as well keep going mm. and finish this we didn't realize it was going to take five years but you know that was the idea even then yeah right <laughs> <laughs> brilliant but you know we're really glad you like it okay so um I mean, having listened to the album a lot over the last couple of weeks, um, it probably is the darkest thing that I've heard in quite a long time. 
uh, which is really refreshing, really, because um, it's just it's just so it's not an easy listen. But I like that about it. That's something that that, that I credit it for. Um, it's 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 interesting. It's 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 kind of ballsy. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of uh, risks. You know, in, 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 you can tell that it's just something that you want to do for yourselves more than anyone else, from the sounds of things. Um, but just just where did uh, where did, how does that sort of sort of work between the two of you? Sort of, do you both have very different ideas about music, or do you have very similar ideas about music? I mean, does that how does that work? It's not that different, is it? I mean, I, first of all, I don't find it that dark, but I never do with anything <laughs> I do. I, this seems like lighter than things I do normally. <laughs> but I think obviously we've got our different influences. Um, unfortunately, John likes prog rock, but um, it's not. But a lot of them are in common, I think, aren't they? Yeah, a well, we start out with a shared love of electronics. Mm. And that's kind of where we take it through. And then, yeah, Martin goes towards the punk side of things a lot more than I do. And I go towards the sort of jazz prog improv side of things a lot more than he does. Mm. So um, it's, uh, I think we said that it was kind of a, a meeting of minds that approached the same middle from very different ends, I think. Mm. So uh, we were. We work together in the studio surprisingly well and surprisingly quickly, given that you know we are trying to come to do the same thing, but but from very different sides, and so it uh, it always seemed quite easy, really. Mm. Yeah, because we'd have a different opinion on something, but it's only like a little bit, you know. Or they might be like that, and then they'll come in, and yeah, then gradually. Yeah. Well, try that. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Or oh, go on. Mm. And then it, it, it works. And so, I mean, you're always going to get some sort of compromise yeah. in any band. But mm. it's, I mean, but then that's what makes it special sometimes. That's what makes it work, yeah. yeah. It's the nature of collaboration. Yeah. So, is there any sort of conflicts or anything like that? Um, you know, anything? I think that'll be on the second album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that difficult second yeah. album, yeah. which will pre probably buy current yeah. music about differences. 2040. <laughs> I don't want to start playing a flute. Things, <laughs> oh, I don't think that. No. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Um, I'm trying to get a real drummer in here. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> we do we do have quite a shared sensibilities, but we, we do have quite a lot of differences as well. And yet the recording has always been a case of just trying different things and there'll be enough, you know, if I'm kind of sitting there thinking I'm not, to into that and then there'll be something that happens that I'll just think okay wow okay let's try this and we can take it in that direction and then if Martin's thinking something similar it's a, he can always add something into the mix that's going to do something that's going to make it better for him and yeah we seemed to have done so far touching wood we seem to have done that pretty easily mm -hmm. yeah I mean normally I work for attrition it's me so with other guests mm -hmm. whatever and they'll put an input in, but it's gen but generally I'm like the... You have a final say on, I am, on everything. Yeah, the yeah. dictator. <laughs> but it, with this, it's more of a communist collective. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, so it's it's interesting, you know, to like, go, you know, well, all right, well, I think it should have had uh, more reverb, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. just sort more of cowbell. to go, yeah. yeah. And um, and then sometimes you go, well, actually, yeah, that's, that works, but I wouldn't have really gone for that. So sometimes mm. that changes what you would normally have done, mm. challenges it. Um, but it hasn't been like crazy, but it's, mm. it's yeah, I think that's, that's quite good. I think the, one of the first decisions that we made without even kind of talking too much about it was that we wanted to have most of the vocals that were being used as found audio. So yeah, samples taken from whatever it might be. Yeah. So yeah. we use video drone on what am I? Yeah. <clears throat> so that seems to set a template. And then when we came back to it, we were using the first two things I think that we were starting to mix in were the found speech of John F. Kennedy to the American press corps that um, yeah. basically we cut to meaning the exact opposite of what he was saying mm. um, and that became the, the basis of Karl Marx and then the Jim Jones um, tape from the, uh, the drinking the Kool-Aid um, on the good life mm. um, which wasn't I found on the internet and was a surprisingly um, 
good quality considering it was recorded in the compound on a cassette yeah and it was the final hours of what was happening there and so we trawled through a lot of or i trawled through a lot of that and picked out the choices bits and then we yeah. worked with that and it's kind of interesting because people think that that's quite a, a dark track but yeah. that's probably mainly to do with the content of the vocal yeah so musically it's quite um <laughs> It's quite a beat, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. The rest it's, of the it's, album. It's, and also the next single, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. the titles are yeah. quite it's tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Same with uh, on the divine plan. Yeah, it is acceptable to commit suicide. Yeah, before the <laughs> 1984 it? sample, that was the first. Those were the first yeah. words you heard on the album. Yeah. Um, so, which we liked the idea of, but I kind of did like the idea of putting the 1984 stuff in there as well yeah. just to give it that grounding in because when we were talking about how people were going to receive it and um, we, we obviously thought that Das Kapital as a title might provoke some people particularly on the other side of the pond into not liking it or ha having it oh, an ideological mm -hmm. um, a, a, a opposition to it mm -hmm. but um, A we did it with the usual irony, tongue in cheek, whatever. Mm. And B, we kind of tried to um, make the album as much about totalitarianism as possible. Mm. And so, you know, some of the themes that wind their way through the album, we just kind of figured that the, the idea of Das Kapital and Mark Karl, because we'd already done the Karl Marx single, mm. was kind of um, just another way of, of putting out mixed messages and winding people up, really. <laughs> So, so um, I mean, progressively the album as well, it, it has its own flow, so it starts off with it, it's got kind of its um, sort of EBM, almost sort of industrial sort of stuff going on, and then it kind of descends into total soundtrack um, synth, barely any any drums really throughout, mm. and it starts to kind of really descend. Is there, is there like a, is there a, a, a theme in terms of uh, concept that sort of flows through that as well? Like the, I think we just did really we did the pieces separately but then they begin it began to come together when i do an album i always think of an album mm. so i i do it on well, i use wave lab mm. to, to put all the songs so even in the early days with the demos you can start putting them in an order and seeing how they work yeah and then that can go and influence the actual track itself you might go that oh we've got loads of drums there let's do a piece where it's falls back a bit and it's more ambient now that would be number track five yeah and so that's that that it's sort of organic really mm. it wasn't we didn't sit there and you know this is what it'll be like and then we have to write the pieces it's just as you go yeah yeah, yeah. and then the sounds that you discover i mean yeah. i tech no was all about discovering the japanese choir yeah, it's like wow, that sounds fantastic. Japanese children's choir. Yeah, I think we can use that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and so that became one of the kind of milder tracks on the album because the Fukushima it was just, school choir. Yeah, the Fukushima <laughs> school choir. Just to see where we could go with that. Mm. Um, but I, I don't think we really ever had a concept. I mean, one of the things that stitched the album together in our minds was the, the amount of times that we were using numbers stations on mm. on tracks. And, that, and then we, we kind of realised that A, a lot of other people have been doing that and B, we wanted to try and scale it back somewhat so there used to be a lot more numbers on it than there is now mm -hmm. um, but even so, we, we liked number stations so much that we wanted to include them mm -hmm. um, and so even on even on something like uh, The Good Life um, the really weird staccato vocal effect on The Good Life is um, is a number station just chopped up and gated hmm. and it sounds great but you'd never tell that's where it came from originally yeah yeah um what's um the razor inside about oh, man. <laughs> what's the razor inside about that's a really good question um <laughs> the razor inside was we had a tr we had the, the music for that particular track um but we didn't have any obvious found vocal that could go with it and I suggested in my stupidity that we could potentially use some of my old modular poetry that I used to write when I was about 18 to 21 or something um, and it was all completely derivative of people like William Burroughs and the Surrealists um, and effectively it was just cut and paste it was like taking lots of um, words or s fragments of sentences from different sources and then putting them next to each other, juxtaposing them, seeing how they worked and whether they worked. 
-hmm. And so the full title of the razor inside is 4WB because it's for William Burroughs. And that is something that I never thought would ever see the light of day. <laughs> um, and here, here we are, you know, 40 odd years after I wrote it. <laughs> well, and it's, it's, now, it's now on the album. Yeah, immortalised. Yeah. <laughs> What's what's next in terms of what you want to do with it? Where do you want where do you want to take this album? Are you going to, are you going to do some gigs? Are you going to where are you going to distribute it? What's the what's yeah, the plan? Um, actually, one of the things I wanted to say is what I like about Engram as as opposed to Attrition, which I've done for like thirty seven years or whatever, is that there are no expectations with it, so we can do whatever we want, and we in a, in a way we don't care. We can mm. just you know, it's not whereas with having a long history with attrition, I've got things I've done and blah, blah. But with this, I like the fact that we can do what we want. So um, we s we're still like making it up as we go along as well, aren't we? Um, but the plan is we've done the album, so we're going to release, obviously we're releasing it. It's ridiculous if we didn't. <laughs> but, uh, That's just don't really why would yeah. we do it? Philosophical yeah. concept. Yeah. Spent yeah. 20 years doing an album, don't release it. We're just yeah. going to do the interview and that's it. <laughs> but uh, we're doing that and then whatever formats. And uh, yeah, so we want to do it live as well. Mm. Um, and that's as we get the album ready, it's all virtually ready to go off to be pressed. And uh, So that's the next thing, isn't it, really? Looking at live rehearsing. And yeah, I mean, yeah. so I'm away for a while and then coming back in October, that's when we're going to release the... Um, we're going to do it ourselves on CD and download, so it's going to go out on Bandcamp as, as download and then there's going to be a limited edition 100 CD run. Mm. Might be a short cassette run. There might I be think. a short cassette run also, yeah. um, seeing as now people seem to have got cassettes back in their heads for some some unknown Final reason. Links. Well, we're still... We, I'd buy it. We'll, yeah, we'll <laughs> see, but I don't think we'll do that ourselves, but yeah. we've, we have sent a few tracks out to some labels, so... Mm. But you know these things can take a bit of time sometimes, yeah, yeah. and it wouldn't be all the tracks because that's it's nearly an hour. So yeah, yeah. Um, but that would be nice, yeah. Um, Plus, as you say, it's difficult music, so it's not the sort of thing that's going to grab. Yeah. Unless they're particularly clued into its vibe, they're not going to get grabs to grab them on first listen. Mm. They're going to have to kind of grow into it a little yeah, bit. Absolutely. And absolutely. Um, you know. That takes us back to, the, I think, one of the things that we wanted to create when we were starting to record, when we came back in in 2013 and said, right, there's going to be an album at the end of this. Whenever it's going to be, there's going to be an album. It was, we wanted to record the kind of music that we feel is not out there anywhere near enough these days. That kind of, dare I use the word intelligent, um, slow burn, you know, carefully crafted electronica that you've tried to put a bit more soul is the wrong word but you know a bit more into than just the normal mm -hmm. synth pop mm. elements or the EBM elements or the industrial elements or the soundtrack elements we've tried to collage all of those things but mm. we've also tried to grow them when we've hit them too yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we we have no idea how the album will play but we think that there are going to be a minority of people out there who, when they hear it, will really, really like it. Mm. Well, we did Karl Marx, was it two years ago? Three. Bloody hell. 2015. Um, that was a, it was a single, but a download. Um, but it's also appeared on two or three CD compilations and right. been played all over the place. And it's actually done quite well, you know, right. it's, uh, with, for, uh, you know, it's a good start. So, uh, you know, I think it will, I think it'll go down quite well, really, the album. Yeah. But, um, so, same with any music that I do. I do it anyway. You know, um, it doesn't works, matter. It works. Yeah. It doesn't. But you just do it enough until people give in and just, you know, like you. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, we, yeah, we want to do some live stuff. And obviously, we've got a little bit of a, a hook in with attrition that if John comes, it's only one extra person. Mm. So, that might mean that we can. Um, it, well, it, it will mean that we can go and play in different countries. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't—that's not rocket science. Mm. Um, 
So there's that, and then all, I mean, for recordings, I don't know. It's a bit early after. It's a bit of a shock that we finished it. Really. Yeah. Always, well, that was, that was I think we were like putting it off. <laughs> yeah. Like watching a good series, you don't yeah. want to give it. You know, get to the end. Yeah. To be fair to ourselves as well, I think that um, there were plenty of times in the last five years with with each one of the tracks that's on the album where we kind of looked at each, each other and said oh, that's more or less finished now that's great that's mm -hmm. that's there mm -hmm. and then maybe it was only a quarter of the way done compared to the amount of work we finally ended up putting yeah. into it you know yeah. so we have actually put a lot of more effort than because we, we probably could have re released an album three years been, ago that we yeah. were happy with. Mm. But now we're super happy with this. Mm. <laughs> if we'd been we just... paying, you know, 20 quid an hour, we'd have finished it years ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> this is the beauty of, of, you know, both of us more or less having our time to ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, you know, mm. we, we could come and, uh, you know, I could come into the cage and we could just, you know, set up, start up. And then we'd know pretty much off the bat that we'd got some... We always knew that it was going in the right direction. Mm. We were always very confident in the quality of it. Mm. And then it was just how, how quickly we could get it to work. And it, five years sounds like not quickly at all, really. Mm. You know, even Kraftwerk could probably have done an album in that period. But um, we did take a great deal of time and care and polish over it. So because we, we were allowed to, as Martin said, if, it, if there'd been kind of pounds per hour riding on this, then it would have been quite a lot different and quite a lot sparser i think mm. also it wasn't our main project so it no. was like you know obviously it takes longer mm. perhaps been two years to do the like the album and do it if we did then it was the main thing mm. but yeah that's that's good so i mean we i don't know if we, I, I quite like the idea of doing a an ep with a perhaps go, do another track or and some different mixes or just do some follow-up yeah. Perhaps when we gig in, you know. Yeah, yeah. But there's, there's, there's nothing, in peace to go with it. nothing set in stone. Well, for a long time <laughs> I've had this, I don't quite know why, <clears throat> but I've had this hankering to do an engram cover of um, White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> we kind of started it. <laughs> we started it, yeah, it. but we didn't get very far. So I think that that's something that I'd we like could to revisit. Yeah. It's because the timing of the original is... For some reason, they didn't use a computer, <laughs> and uh, I surprised it was released. And it was like, so the timing goes, no, but it's really, just, it's really, it if you analyse it, it drifts. it's really bad. Not that that's bad, you know, it's like speeds up. And, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, but then it made, that caused problems. Yeah, when you're trying, <laughs> when you're trying to rip it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then, you know, then we, does that take us down the road of doing a, a small covers EP and thinking of other stuff that we really like and want to, put into that you know there's, there's plenty of grounds for um for planning but at the moment it, as i say it's as martin said it's just the, the shock of having actually finished it after all these years yeah. just rest on your laurels for a bit you know? yeah it's just yeah. kind of <laughs> you know go back and drink some coffee and think wow I, I, we actually did that mm. you know um so the life the life things are going to happen in due course mm. um and spending time promoting it, I mean, yeah. it takes a lot because it feels getting some it. merchandise mm. for the live gigs, and you know, it's not going to be something that's going again. As Martin said, it's it's still not our main project, so it's but it's something that can fit now mm. nice and easily around both of the projects that we're doing, so mm. it'll work. Yeah. yeah. Well, when um, we did What Am I, and then when we started doing stuff like Karl Marx and The Good Life, we realised that it wasn't going to be. You know, it was going to be difficult in inverted commas music. It wasn't going to be that kind of uh, immediate because the, it was pulling so many different influences together. Mm. You know, so obviously it's all it, it's it's nearest damn it all electronic, but you've got soundtrack tonalities, you've got kind of ambient, you've got industrial, mm. you've got some some what cool. you might call techno, some mm. what you might call EBM, mm. um, some what you might call synth art pop, and it all kind of just got went into the same melting pot really. Yeah. I was going to do a vocal actually and I never got around to it. Mm -hmm. so then, I was yeah, expecting one to be honest. I was, yeah. I was expecting <laughs> one but um, that gives a reason to do another follow-up doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was I, just I, weird I, the way that that worked because it was, you know, most of the vocals were found vocals. Well, yeah, I, I, I liked that it was all spoken word, Every, even the actual recorded. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I think that that was, that was a a, a very conscious decision that if we were going to do, you know, 
Exquisite Corpse, which is the old surrealist word game. Um, and then we were also going to do the Razor Inside, which was, which I dragged out, was, you know, my old poem from the late late seven late seventies, I guess, shit, early eighties. Um, we didn't want it to do it as a sort of pop song. We didn't want it to do it as a sung vocal. So it was only going to work as a spoken vocal. I think, yeah, I think we realised that early on that we yeah. didn't want to do because we got some bits with a beat, and we thought you could like there was a. I can't remember which track it was. It's got like a bit of a 90s EBM sort of thing. It's a couple, I suppose. Um, Early on the first few. Of yeah, they've track. got that kind of yeah. thing. And it could have gone for a, that kind of track, a bit of shouting mm. through a megaphone or whatever, you know. But it's it, we just didn't really want to do it, and I mm. think. And, and also with the vocals, I'm doing plenty on with the Trish and I'm recording. Yeah. That, that album's taken years as well, but not quite as long, mm. but that new one's nearly done. So I'm doing a lot of the moments. I didn't feel the need. I think that's another thing. Yeah. There's, um, there's a, it mentioned on the credits, it mentions a guest vocalist as well. I, I honestly thought it was a sample. I didn't realise it was actually a guest well, vocalist. Well, it almost is the way it's been manipulated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was, no, it's Christina, yeah. Um, yeah. She's uh, American. Yeah, we should talk about her. Mm. <laughs> she's, a, she's American, but she lives in Holland now. Okay. With, a, with her boyfriend, Eric. And um, I've got no. I can, this thing's gone on too long because I don't remember how we anything started. You know? I think but, I think we asked her if she'd got because we knew she was a vocalist, mm. um, and we asked her if she'd got anything. And it was some medieval German hymn, wasn't it? It is. Yeah, that's what it yeah, is. I thought it was German. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't and, know why. Uh, that's, that's so good. she sent it through, and then we listened to it, and we liked it, and we thought. We had a good track in mind for it, and then we realised that we'd have to change the key of the track if we wanted to put her vocal on that track. So and then we realised that we didn't want to change the key of the track, so what we actually did was we changed the key of her vocal. Yeah. Um, and that, that took a lot of manipulation, yeah, but it was worth it. It was worth it. So when she actually hears it, she'll... Uh, she'll oh, she has heard it. Oh, has she? Good. She's got, yeah, that's it. good. Because uh, so, and she hasn't killed us yet, so that's all good. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so um, we had to do quite a lot of uh, changing of pitch and um, key on on her vocal, but I think mm. it it just works so well with the track now. Mm. 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 Yeah, and that's that's the same track with the kind of um, that's, synth that's, guitar overload as well, which is yeah, that's know. probably my favourite track. That's the one that ends up going into what <laughs> yeah, sounds like a real drum kit, but yes, yeah. Um, it, yeah. It's just kind of a bit otherworldly, though. It doesn't quite seem. It, it, I like it. Yeah. yeah. So forget, that's that's the most kraut rock that the whole thing goes. Yeah, I that's true. Pretty yeah. much. Kraut rock's yeah. all right. Kraut yeah. isn't. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a primitive very, of it. Yeah, to be fair, it's probably kraut prog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah it's um, and um, I, I we should so also mention. It. Um, <laughs> we should also mention the uh, the artist, the album artist. Yes. There's a yeah. guy called Rainer Ganal who's. Um, you know, uh, an internationally known um, socialist artist who, uh, it's kind of interesting because I saw the image on the net and I just really liked it and uh, I just, but the, the only one that I found was a kind of shitty quality one that would to, would to stood up for an album cover and of course, you know, then you have to get the rights. And I, so I just contacted him, I contacted him through his website and uh, he got back to me um, in his very strange English and he, uh, he was quite keen, actually, so he said, um, yeah, just use it, and uh, he asked me what I wanted to use it for, and, you know, he's probably forgotten all about it now, because this was at least three years ago, and I said it was going to be on the cover of an album, um, that we were a small band, that we, you know, we weren't going to do it as a big major release, it was going to be a limited edition of 100 CDs. So he said, yeah, yeah, use it, and just give me a credit, and um, sling me a copy of the album. And so that was good. And so when I um, I uh, wanted to know where to send it, um, he, he said Fifth Avenue in New York. <laughs> so he's obviously doing all right. The heart of socialism. <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I'm sure, as I say, he's forgotten all about it. So when he actually gets the CD through, he'll probably go, oh, bloody hell, is this? Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I still have the emails. So mm. from when he said yes, 
by all means, use it. So <laughs> <laughs> I think we're doing t-shirts with it, aren't we? Yeah, we, and, and you, yeah, we said, and I did say that the idea was then to, because it was such a striking image, to use it as the uh, as a t-shirt. As well. Completely so, red, or just with the red? Yeah, uh, with the red on black, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he said, yeah, just bring your t-shirt as well. So, um, and then. We had some great yeah. photographs taken Which, for the cover by Anthony Weir. Yes. Um, of course. In the yeah, old yeah. Country yeah. Evening Telegraph building, which you knew very well. You played that, didn't you? I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did it was great, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't in the, um, it wasn't downstairs in the in the press room, in the printing room, though. It was in the yeah. office. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, is, again, was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> in itself. <laughs> it's, it's, it almost seems like they never redecorated since when it was built. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so I mean, there's some quite quite interesting photographs down there. Very industrial, industrial looking panels, yes, which look mm. quite nice and you know, science fictiony. <laughs> well, Martin told me about it, and um, we did a job lot, didn't we? I, it was attrition, and then we changed a little I saw, few I saw things it. around, and then we did uh, engram. Although yeah. I went twice, I went with another photographer, right. Andre. So. But I I didn't know the place, you know, that I didn't know it was open to the public, mm. and so uh, and then by the time. We came to, you know, trying to do the engram shoot. It was you know, literally a week before it was due to close. Mm, yeah. So we had to actually get on it straight away, which was good because Martin contacted Anthony and Anthony said yes, and he mm. did a really good job. So yeah, yeah, he's really he good. He deserves mm. a lot of thanks for that too, because yeah. I know he's done photographs for you guys as well. That's right. Yeah, again, he's done two of my things. He did the soup hooch one and the oh, autograph okay. one as well. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and then, now it's just a question of, um, Seeing what happens when we put the CDs out and the Bandcamp downloads, and seeing who actually uh, cottons onto it, and where it goes from there. We, you know, the great thing is with these things, as you know, is once you give birth to something and then you let it out into the world, you've got no control over it from that point onwards. So it yeah. finds see, its own level. See what happens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it.